the, the truck is interrogating the samples and when you read the barcode it knows that this is a coagulation sample and as we can see it's green in color. It waits for a few minutes before the robot will say no these are for my analyzer and the robotic arm will move will take the sample and load it onto the coagulation machine where it can perform various tests. INR, APTT, combine fibrinogen and D-dimers. This is what we call a coagulation profile. Not every patient will have coagulation profile. Most patients will just have an INR or an APTT. If they're on anticoagulation, for example warfarin, they will be INR. If they're on another anticoagulation, which is called heparin, which are mainly in inpatients or even in hospitals, maybe post-op surgery, to prevent them from clotting up, they will be heparin. They will be on heparin, uh, which, you, uh, which you use an APTT to monitor heparin levels. Other factors such as thrombin time, fibrinogen and D-dimers are useful indicators of a patient's coagulation profile. D-dimers are useful in DVT patients and sepsis patients and in certain trauma patients where we need to know what kind of coagulation or coagulopathy is going on. And what we have here is a little cubex with a ball bearing inside which oscillates when you send a current through it. Once the ball bearing stops oscillating, what you'll have is a crop formation. Right? And what we're doing is identifying crop formation. So that will tell us the end point of the test. Uh, we would use like a normal uh, standard curve, 50% of the time is taken for the crop to perform. In the olden days, we used to use light intensity. Using light intensity is a good method, but there's also drawbacks. For example, if a sample is lipemic, I mean, the sample is very, very milky, light cannot pass through it because it's already a turbid sample. Whereas in this, nothing gets affected. Uh, so this is a much, much more robust system of testing. And one of the problems we have is the GP surgeries, they may do an INR, right? And they may end up with a result of two or three. When they send it to the hospital here, we may find the actual sample with an INR which is elevated and they can't understand why. Now our analyzers are so well maintained because of the QC materials we have, we have to perform regularly. Right? Every uh, two to three hours there will be a QC based on it and the way we, our technology is it's very different from what they use in GPs which are endpoint detectors they use whole blood we use plasma and this is much much more accurate it doesn't get affected by humans at all right